Glory be to Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now in the time to prepare ourselves for this great feast of resurrection. And we have this couple days retreat here in the parish. Yesterday I have told people in the evening about my experience as a child, the great experience of being loved and protected by my parents, by my father. And this is what we have through all of the gospel, actually through whole of the Bible, protection that God is offering his children. Today's story is kind of sad one. And the sadness of this story is not in the fact that Jesus is telling his disciples that he will be killed in Jerusalem. The sadness of that story lies in the fact that they do not understand what it does, does mean to be part of this great movement that Jesus initiated, that movement to the kingdom of heaven with new rules, with beatitudes, with joyfulness, but also with humility and serving each other. James and John, they know that something great is about to happen. Yes, they are convinced because they spent so much time with Jesus that they will stay with him through all the troubles he is about to get in Jerusalem. But at the same time, they don't really know they, might, they master. They don't really know who Jesus is. Because first request they made is about having political authority in that new kingdom of heaven. In their mind, that kingdom of heaven is another kingdom. And as Jesus has told his disciples, all those kingdoms are about rulers suppressing the subdues. I think in Luke's gospel, those words are even harsher. Jesus is telling that those to, who lord over others, the political elite, abuses all the others who are beneath them. That word abuse is something that we may always connect with other parts of our life, but in political life, abuse is always something that is present. And Jesus is telling his disciples, you know, this is not how it's supposed to be. You are called, you are created for something better. You are called to build a new society that will be completely different. And that difference is not unnatural. Because through the fact that we are born out of love, that that love of God was first one that was foundation for the life on earth that the society we live in is supposed to be the same. So there is a tragic in that story. Three years, disciples who were listening to Jesus, they followed him and witnessed all those beautiful, marvelous miracles he performed. They listened so much, but actually at the end, they only concerned with themselves. What is our place in that new kingdom? Who will serve us? How we can manage to get as much people subdued to us? I think when Jesus was speaking with them, he was upset. There's just a couple days till he will be crucified. He spent so much time trying to teach them the right thing, the right way of life. And they did nothing. At least they did not show any understanding at that point. Yes, we know the time later, the time came when they received the Holy Spirit and they changed. 
and they were beautiful examples of that humble servant. They did everything. They even gave as they mastered their own lives in order to build a new society. But finally, what we have today, we're not far away, sadly, from James and John in that moment of today's gospel. And I'm not speaking only about political societies we live in, because it doesn't matter where we are, in the United States, in Ukraine, in any other country, we have, this, we have the same problems. We have the problems of abuse, of political powers, of financial powers. But this is not about politics. Today, this is more, much more about us and people around us. We should keep in mind that we have spent with Jesus way more time than James and John. They spent just three years. We, our whole life. We should also know that James and John received the Holy Spirit after the resurrection. We are living in this sacrament of, I forgot the name for that in English, Maropomazenia, confirmation. Since we were little children, at least most, the biggest number of us here, we had everything in our lives. The words of Jesus directed to us, his grace, mercies, support from our parents. We grew up in societies that were not hostile to the Christians, at least those of you who grew up here in the United States or the younger one in Ukraine after we became independent. But when we look at ourselves, are we far away from James and John in today's Gospel? What we are asking for in our daily life, how we are acting. Are we always considering the first position for ourselves, trying to put our own ideas first and saying, everyone else should listen to me because I am the most knowledgeable person, I know what to do, everyone else is just supposed to follow me. You see, this is not just about politics, this is about your daily life, in your family, in your work environment, everywhere where you are. Often we are as bad as James and John. Or even worse, because we should know better than they. It sounds strange because they are great apostles and they were following Jesus and they were witnessing all the miracles, but we are also followers of Jesus. We are the same way gifted in abundance to, with his grace and love. And those words we hear not the first time about serving each other, about building society that is just and merciful and charitable, but we are where we are, and we are who we are. Often selfish and trying to put ourselves on the first place. Why this gospel is important, not just because those words spoken by Jesus were spoken almost at the end of his mission here on earth, they are important because we are about a week before we will enter with Jesus Jerusalem. We are people who in two weeks will celebrate Easter. Are we prepared? What will we do then? Will we go away? 
because Jesus is not giving us this chance and opportunity to be on the first place in this life, because he's calling us to serve each other and be merciful and charitable, will we say that this is all kind of not really our business? Our business is about putting ourselves first. We should know better. And we should, sh we should show that knowledge in our daily life. When you have your family, your co-workers, your friends, you should treat them with charity and mercy. You should prepare yourselves and ourselves to that great feast of resurrection. And it's really easy to miss that great feast when we will act selfishly and will not listen to the words of Jesus. Today he is calling us to form the new society. And this is not just about big state structures. This is not about something that is supposed to govern the whole world. This is about the people who are next to us. They deserve our humility, they deserve our charity and mercifulness. And so let us not make Jesus sad through our lack of understanding of his mission and his words. Let us make ourselves joyful because we are called not to misuse and to abuse others. We are called to bring them joy. And Jesus is enabling us to do that through his mercy and grace, through his presence in our lives. Because we are all his children and we all receive the Holy Spirit. And we live our lives with him. And so when we want to be with him in his kingdom, on the right or the left, let us serve each other in humility and joy. Slava Isusu Christopher.